Hey people in YouTube land, Zach Hall here. I want to bring a Bible review to you today. And we're going to be looking at the King James Wide Margin Concord Reference Bible um, from Cambridge. Um, so this is kind of the standard wide margin in the industry. Uh, you could say it's the, the king of wide margins. Um, this is an older edition, but I actually got this for a really good deal. But the insides are exactly the same. So if you buy a Concord Wide Margin, uh, what I show you on the inside today will be the exact same thing as if you buy the goatskin version, the calfskin version today. Um, but I want to show you guys this, give you a full review on it, show you how I'm using it, how I'm taking notes in it, and then just kind of give you an idea of what, what you'd be getting. So, know if you get a new one today, it comes in a newer Cambridge box. This one is a one from the 90s and the early 2000s. So, that kind of dates it from where it is. This does have a 38 GSM paper. And this is a two-part box here. This is actually a bonded leather that Cambridge did. It's called a Cabra bonded leather. And uh, so you can see, I mean, it's nothing too special. It's bonded leather, but you've got Holy Bible, King James Version, wide margin, and Cambridge seal there at the bottom. It comes with actually two long ribbon markers. I mean, these are really long for Cambridge. And both these ribbons are really nice. You've got a good gold guild around the whole text block. Okay. And this thing is pretty much brand new, um, even though it's from the 90s, early 2000s. Uh, nobody uses it. I actually got this for like $35, brand new. <laughs> so it was a great deal. Because this Bible is definitely probably worth at least 200 So here you have a nice presentation page. The one in the older edition here is more of a um, off-color yellow, a cream color. You can see the difference there. The, the newer ones is going to be a white page, but I believe it's pretty much the same basic style there as far as how that's set up. Then you're going to get your title page. So you can kind of see the only thing really is probably what's going on right here where... I think the Bible will probably fail with the bonded leather cover. Eventually this will just probably completely tear. But I think that'll take a while to do that. And once it does, I'm just planning on getting this rebound. We can see so you got the title page there, got the royal crest, got this being printed in the Netherlands, and this is actually bound in the United Kingdom because it's an older edition, so it's actually bound at Cambridge University Press. Here you have a contents page. I'm going to pause that take a look at it, you can. And then you've got a guide to pronunciation marks, a note on the Cambridge bold figure references, and then you get the epistle dedicatory to King James, and then you have the translators to the reader as well, which all of this is done in wide margin as well, so you can take notes of that. Then you get into the books of the Bible, and then we've got the first page of Genesis. And you can see it's a beautiful 8-point font, very bold, very dark, easy to read. The verse numbers are very well identified, so you can quickly find your spot. Beautiful margins here. You have about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half on the outside, inch and a half on the inside, about an inch and three quarter there on the bottom. And then at the top, you have about an inch to an inch and a quarter. But you can see you've got your chapter heading there book heading and then the bold figure reference is that there are no actual reference keys in the text so you don't have any letters don't have any numbers what you're going to do is you're going to find that verse so if it's on the left hand column the number will be left justified if the verse is on the right hand column it'll be right justified so here you can see there's a note for verse number four so come over here and then on this same page on the opposite where it's justified verse 16 you would look right here and so it's a very nice way to keep it as an uncluttered text. Um, you can see the page number at the bottom. Of course, the center column reference. The Concord has, I believe, 80,000 cross-references in it. So it is a very good reference edition. They also make this without wide margin, which Lord willing, I'll be getting soon. And I'll be looking forward to doing a review on that for you as well. That one would be the goatskin edition. So we'll take a better look at that. That's more of the hand mid mid-size one where there's no wide margin and... Um, but this one has a nice thick paper in 38 GSM paper. You can see there's barely any ghosting on the page here. Very beautiful text. You do have running page headers. You can see out of the box this thing lays 
completely flat. Now again, my only concern is probably this right here. I think this will tear away eventually, but it does have reinforced uh, tape in there. So we'll see. But if it does fall apart, no big deal. The paper is well worth <laughs> the $35. So I'll definitely get it rebound. But this is a black letter edition. So the Cambridge Concord white margin is black letter, but the regular size Concord can come in uh, black or red letter. Okay. So you can see there's a note I took here in Ecclesiastes. And I'll show you exactly how I'm keeping track of those. That is an 005 Pigment Micron. So I'll flip to the other side, show you what that looks like. So you can see, obviously, it goes through, but there's no bleeding through. And really, it's pretty minimal. It's not that bad at all. You can see where I wrote that scripture reference with the Micron pin on the opposite side. That, that almost pretty much just doesn't even show up. So very thick paper. Very, very nice paper. Again, the Concord wide margin is pretty much the standard in the uh, King James wide margin category. And so if you get this Bible, you're getting a good one. Here's a New Testament title page. Getting here, you do have a self-pronouncing text. And you can see there it is a black letter edition. And then uh, when you get to the New Testament, actually, the numbers do reset in this Bible. So it goes back to page one in Matthew chapter one and then runs through the rest of the book. But for a wide margin, I mean, it's a great size. It is a bigger Bible. Um, it's definitely in the, you know, nine and a half by six and a half range. Um, so it's a good size book, uh, but it's only about an inch and three quarter thick, so not overly huge, overly massive. And this one actually feels like it has slightly thinner paper than the new editions, even though I don't doubt this is 38 GSM. Um, so if it's almost about an inch and a half, so actually a very manageable, manageable size. So let you guys get a look at the text here. Again, just beautifully done. So I'll show you here. I was taking some notes in uh, First Timothy, part of a Bible study that I go to. And so I was taking notes here. So what I'm doing, and I'll show you in the back here, when I'm taking notes, is I'm referencing them with my own numbers. So I have one, two, three, four. So these are the first four notes I've taken in this Bible. Okay, tons of references. And again, just for the sake of showing you, I'll show you the back page so you can see the ghosting. Okay. So you can see it's not bad, not bad at all. Doesn't bleed through. Paper is extremely thick and durable. So some of the best Bible paper in the world. Now, what they have, and I'll quickly go through the back material here so we can kind of get to the note taking, but I did want to show you guys this whole Bible just in case you're new to it. I, actually, my first review on my entire channel was of this same Bible. So if you haven't seen that yet, scroll down all the way to the bottom of my playlist and the first review I ever posted on YouTube was actually the Cambridge Concord in goatskin, which actually I have over on the shelf of Bibles over there. Anyway, so once you get to Revelation 22, it comes to the end there. Then you get a short glossary of biblical usage. So these are words that have fallen out of use or they have changed meaning over time. It is a pretty short list. Um, that's about probably nine pages, but uh, it does have a lot of entries in there. It gives you the way it's used, whether it's a noun, adjective, verb. Um, and then some examples of where it's used. Then you get a nice concordance to the New Testament and the Old Testament. And that runs for a good amount of the book as well. Now in the regular Concord edition, uh, in addition to the biblical glossary, or the uh, biblical usage, and then the concordance, you also get a Bible dictionary. You do not get a Bible dictionary in the wide margin edition. However, what you do get in this is a lot more note space. So in the back here, they have a blank page that's called index to notes and then right after that you'll notice that all these pages <laughs> have the alphabet so it goes from a to z so you have 26 blank pages of notebook paper or a bible paper excuse me so that essentially gives you 52 pages so 26 front and back and then once you get to the end of the 
letter portion, you actually get lined notebook paper. And this, I believe there's over 70 pages of this. So very thick paper. It's actually thicker than the Bible paper that is used in here, slightly thicker. And it is a lot and lot of paper. So this is probably what the Concord is mostly known for is this all the note paper in the back. So if you are a note taker, this Bible is the Bible for you. And then really quick, uh, we have maps here in the back. These, because this is the older, this is like from the 1990s, early 2000s. I couldn't really peg down the exact date this was made. But uh, this is the old Moody maps that they they used to use, as you can see here, the copyright. So that, that copyright's in 86, which this Bible's a little bit newer than that. So um, these are the older maps. So if you get the new one, Cambridge has their own maps now. They still have a map index and all that stuff. But what I want to show you is what I'm doing with my note system to keep track of where my notes are is I actually wanted to use the index to notes for what it was intended to use. So a lot of people I see do reviews. Uh, they use these blank pages as just uh, extra space for notes, which is fine. You can use these however you want to. Um, so I'm not really you know, trying to dog anybody because I think there's some really cool ideas that people have out there and I encourage you to see their videos as well. Like Matthew Everhard obviously has uh, probably the best video on the Cambridge wide margin. Um, there's some other cool things. Tony Walker has another great review on the Cambridge Concord wide margin. Um, and he does some cool stuff back here as well. Some people try to line this up with like topics that start with these letters. So like, you know, maybe for B you'd have verses or something on the Bible, you know, or Bible study, you know, maybe C you do the cross or something like that. So essentially what the index to notes is and what it was designed for is that every time you took a note or take a note in your Bible, you would reference it back on these pages and eventually you're going to have a whole index of verses that you've taken notes on in the Bible. So the way I've done this to notate it for my mind to make it easier is like I showed you in the text there in Timothy. I've actually started uh, numbering my notes. So uh, you saw the first four notes there. So what I do is I come back here and the first note was in First uh, Timothy 6.13. And so what's awesome about the system is that it doesn't matter what book I start in. It just matters what, what note it was in sequential order. So I was studying 1 Timothy, so my first note was in 1 Timothy. So I write a 1, and then I take my note. And then I come back here, I write 1 with the verse. And then if, there, if it's a longer note, I write a short summary of what the note is. So that way I kind of have an idea already when I'm coming back here. So what this does, though is once I start to really fill this out, and this gets multiple pages deep or even towards the end, and I've taken so many notes in my Bible, I might not remember the exact reference of that note. And so what I can do is I can remember the content, or I can remember maybe what number it was, and I can come back here and look up the number and find the scripture reference, or vice versa. I can find what note it is by finding the scripture reference or a brief summary of it. And then I can go to that text and find my note. So that way it makes it a very quick indexing system for you back here so you can find your notes more quickly. So then I'll show you there in Timothy what I did. So there I have the one and I circle it and I write my note right below it. And then two, circle it, write my note, three, and so forth. Okay, so that allows me then to write a lot of notes, but then also to index them in the back to know where they're at. Uh, so that I have them for future reference. So if like you're doing sermon prep or something like that, and you're trying to find a note that you took on a specific subject or a specific chapter and, and verse, and you just can't quite remember it, you can go back there and reference your notes that you've taken and see the scripture references and see the number and then go find that in the actual text. Another thing that the blank pages allow you to do in the back is if you don't have enough space in the wide margin here, um, you could write as much as you can, and then you could use that as a continuum for taking a note at that place. So that's another idea that I've had is that I would reference it, so I would number it, and then if I ran out of space, I would continue that note on the blank page at the back wherever I reference the verse and just write the rest of whatever I wanted to write down and then continue the numbering system. So as you can see, I've just started. Again, like I said, this is, I got a deal at our used bookstore. Someone turned this in, brand new, bonded leather. So I just started taking notes in it. Uh, but I did want you guys to see this and get a feel for the Bible. So again, this is the Cambridge Concord wide margin. It is the standard. It comes with two ribbon markers that I showed you. These ones are actually abnormally long. Um, Cambridge normally does not do ribbons this long anymore, so I do want you to be aware if you 
get a goat skin one or a calf split the uh, ribbons probably will not be as long and honestly these are actually a lot nicer these are actually double-sided satin ribbons um cambridge typically does a different ribbon nowadays but you have the nice head and tail bands the yellow and red that cambridge is known for and then here you have on the inside cover a cabra bonded leather so again your options now today are the calf split or the goat skin both are great options uh, i've had calf split from cambridge and it breaks in very well and of course of course their goat skin is you know legendary um but yeah i mean other than that there's just not much more to say about this thing it is it is what you get i mean if you are a note taker if you love the king james if you love writing notes in your bible if you're a preacher if you're someone who just seriously studies the word you go to a lot of bible studies uh, you got to get one of these the paper is immaculate it takes so many types of different pins and colors and highlighters um, i i prefer the pigma microns but you could use different stuff in this paper because it's that thick and that good of a paper and so you can just see so the amount of space that you have to take notes here. So just a lot and a lot of spaces to take notes. So I look forward to filling this in and, and of course keeping you guys updated on how this holds up. Again, my main concern with the bonded leather edition that you won't have with the other ones is just the construction of this. Um, and even the short time I've had it, I can see it starting to kind of want to split right here. So I think that's going to be its fail point. But if that's the case, at least it would be the cover falling off um, and the rest of the text block could be saved. So that was my main concern. As long as the text block stays intact, which is my sewn, it's very strong durability. It's also glued, so it's glued and stitched. So you have the best of both worlds, both bindings. But you can kind of see where that's wanting to pull away. So it's, it's coming out even a little bit further. So just know on a newer edition, you're probably not going to have that problem. The bonded leather is um, nice, but it obviously it's bonded leather. So it can only hold up to so much use. But if you guys have any more questions in the comments or you want me to compare this to anything else, uh, please let me know. I can do that for you. Um, again, 38 GSM paper, very thick weight, um, very opaque, dark print, 8 point font. But it reads a little bit bigger than that. So if you have... Um, you know eyes that maybe you have to wear bifocals or something like that This is still gonna be very easy and clean text to read and another thing that benefits the readability is not only the spacing But the fact like we said those bold figure references you don't have to have keys in the text So you get those little numbers little letters out of the text and you get just something that's very clean a very presentable bold crisp font and the paper weight uh, also makes this easier to read as well so the heavier paper Makes it more opaque, which makes it a more uh, pleasing reading experience for you. Again, the Concord has over 80,000 cross-references, so it's a great reference Bible if you want something like that. has a very thorough concordance in the back. It goes for over 100 pages. Um, it is the paragraph format as well, so it gets a lot of references in there. And then you do have the biblical, uh, the glossary of biblical usage. So words that in the King James have gotten older and they give you modern equivalents to kind of help you understand what those are. And then you have tons of note paper in the back, which is probably what it is mostly known for. And then you have some good maps as well. So there's a review of the Cambridge Concord wide margin. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd love to help answer any questions I can. Or if you want me to compare this to any other wide margins, um, I did do a video of the Concord and the Allen as well on my channel. So if you'd like to look at that, I do have a review of the Revere Clarendon wide margin versus the Cambridge Concord if you're trying to make a decision between those two. But other than that, I do have other Bibles I could compare it to as well. And like I said, Lord willing, I'll have a Cambridge Concord uh, regular size to compare this to just to show you that it's the same pagination. Everything's on the same page, but it's a lot easier to carry. And it's a 10 point font instead of an eight. So it's blown up a little bit, but everything's on the same page. Just doesn't have the wide margin. So it'd be a great combo if that's something you'd be interested in. Get the wide margin, use it as a desk or pulpit Bible to write all your notes in, and then you could use the midsize to carry around for whatever use you would need it. So again, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. Press the like button, share this with your friends or family, and again, drop any questions you may have in the comments. Thank you, and God bless.